This is really exciting. Like, it's starting to feel like we're going to have a home again soon. We're gonna have a home soon. And the amazing part is it's all gonna be paid for. We're Riley and Courtney Casey. After traveling for six months in a truck camper we built ourselves, we fell in love with North Idaho and purchased 20 acres of raw, off-grid land. We spent the summer building our 30 by 40 barn dominium, and with the weather changing, we are pushing hard to get our building insulated, heated, and comfortable. It has been raining and raining and raining. All of the snow is now gone. It's been weirdly warm. Which is okay, because our building is still not insulated. We are working on getting there, uh, but the warm weather has been a really nice break. If you guys remember, the attic space of our building is actually open, so there's a, a vented roof and vented soffits, which means that any warm air we accumulate inside the building immediately goes up and out the roof. So one final area that we have to seal up to keep the drafty air out is the ceiling of the apartment. Today's project is to see if Courtney and I can figure out a hang drywall. We don't have a drywall lift, but we don't have that many sheets to do in the ceiling in here, and I think we're just gonna try to get it done. This should be interesting. What's going on over here? I was gonna put our first log in and then Riley made me stop because he wanted to film it. So now the log's on fire. It's our first real log in the fire. Will it fit? We might have cut all of our logs too long. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling less hopeful at the moment. <laughs> it fit, but I think the next one should be shorter. We are going to try, Riley put a little ledger to kind of hold it and then we're just gonna see what happens. What could go wrong? I think what could go wrong is you could drop a sheet of drywall on me. Too bad. No I think you're probably gonna tell us we should have used thicker drywall on the ceiling, but we didn't. This is what we bought and we're using it. The Taff and Drywall, after watching some videos on YouTube this morning, it became apparent that maybe we should have bought 5 8 drywall, but we're just gonna make it work. That doesn't look right. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> uh. Mark I hope our wall's not that crooked. <laughs> I think I measured a mark now. Close to the 89 and a half. And that says 86 and a half. This is really exciting. Like, it's starting to feel like we're going to have a home again soon. We're gonna have a home soon. And the amazing part is it's all gonna be paid for. We're adding some extra blocking around the chimney support box to make installing the drywall a lot easier. Okay. No, our sheet is too wide. The whole sheet is too wide. 46 and a quarter, or 46 and an eighth. 
in all of our notching around for the uh, chimney support box, I forgot about making sure that the sheet was the right width for the room, and it's not. Finally, something is just easy. <laughs> Three sheets down, which makes 12 to go. It's really be fun to be making some good visual progress on this build, and I'm excited to get all this drywalled and see what this stove can do. Just standing right here is so warm. And then when you walk over here, where we still just have our exposed ceiling, it's cold. It's crazy. All of our heat going out through the roof. <laughs> The bottom of this truss has a little bow to it that was causing this weird high spot in our drywall right here. So you can see that this is this sheet's flat, this sheet is sucked up tight, and it looks bad. So we're gonna add a sister stud that's straight to that truss to straighten out this roof line so that it looks nice and straight and flat. <laughs> so now with our straight two by four sistered up to the truss up there, we're gonna Rescrew in the sheet of drywall and hopefully it's a lot straighter and flatter now. Moment of truth. Oh, way better. Now it looks flat. <laughs> I think that was worth doing. So we're using leftover pieces of our house wrap to make little deflectors that we're stapling up in this space up here. So when we blow in the insulation, it doesn't go down into our uh, enclosed soffits. Remember, our soffits are vented, so we also need a way to allow that air to go from our enclosed soffits and up along the roof line. So we're leaving a little gap between this deflector and the steel roofing when we staple them in. We forgot to do this for the first sheet of drywall, so I actually had to climb up into the ceiling and put two of these on. Now we're gonna remember to do the rest of them. We saw these little gaps up top here that allow the air to get out through our vented eaves and up into our roof space, but now we'll be able to blow in the insulation nice and thick down in these corners without filling up our vented eaves with insulation. One of the cool things about a post train building is you actually have continuous insulation all the way up the walls and into the roof cavity. So right here you can see this space here is open. So this is gonna all get filled with blow in and then all the way up into the roof, leaving continuous insulation all the way up and through. Working in such a small space means we have to move stuff around a bunch. We thought we put the insulation out of the way, but then we decided to drywall the ceiling. So I think we are just gonna drywall this whole wall because we don't have anything else we need to run in it. There's not any plumbing or anything. Then we can move all the insulation over here and it can just stay out of the way until we're ready for the interior walls to get insulated. Does it fit? <laughs> Hopefully we measured right. <laughs> totally forgot, we need a notch for our truss carrier. Our truss carrier is actually gonna end up probably exposed in this building and, and made to look like a nice beam. Um, but the drywall doesn't fit because it's in the way. That's pretty darn close. All right. 
I used to use the laser for this and it was much quicker. Oh yeah, the laser. I'm gonna see if we can use the window frame as a guide with the Oslig multi-tool to cut this out so we don't have to measure. I think we need the roto zip. Wow, it's really pretty. It was a beautiful day today and we covered up our windows. So step one is to get this window cut out. Our rule is if we need a tool once or twice, we can probably get by without it. But if we keep thinking the tool would help us, we're probably gonna buy it. So last night I went to Home Depot and I got this guy and we are gonna see how it cuts out this window opening. How do you turn this thing on? <laughs> Apparently it's not variable speed. One speed suits all. Ready to see what happens? Yeah. I broke the bit that fast. That's pretty awesome. That is awesome. I don't know how to use that thing, but overall that is sweet. So to be able to run power tools up here that aren't cordless, basically what we did was run an, we ran an extension cord from our truck camper to our electrical panel downstairs so that we can plug our electrical panel into the camper. And then we have one outlet and one switch wired on up here so we can turn the lights on and run power tools on the outlet. It's working really well for us to be able to have clean, quiet, on-demand power all the time. And then if we don't get enough charge from the solar panels, we can charge our camper off our Honda 2000 when it's convenient and that allows us to use a lot less fuel than otherwise would be used running the Honda 2000 all the time, all day. On all our house flips we've done, the drywall is always cracked in the corners. And so one of the really cool things about putting the drywall in this way is you're using a whole sheet and you don't have a bunch of seams in the corners that want to crack. It's also a really efficient way to use drywall because you can just put a whole sheet up and then now we have a giant remnant that we can, can use somewhere else if we want to. So of course, after we drywall this entire ceiling, we watched a few videos on YouTube to get some tips and tricks on taping the joints. And then we saw some people adding strips like this between all of the joists for the joints that run perpendicular to the joists to help support the drywall. And it makes a really big difference in how stiff the drywall feels. And I think it's gonna really help us in the future. I'm able to reach up through our recessed can light holes and add them. So in the next rooms, we'll make sure to add these as we're putting the drywall up, but so all I have to do is stick the, sh the piece up through the recessed can light hole and slide it into place. On, on a lot of these, I can reach my arm up through and get to the next bay. Our warm weather is coming to an end today and it's about to actually be winter. So I'm gonna get a fire going and start heating the shop. What are you using for fire starter? Um, I think these are drywall strips. <laughs> it's the little, the little strips that come off the end of the double sheets. <laughs> it's the paper we had up here.
Tony, what did you do? I'm gonna drop it! But why are you in this position? Because I'm an independent woman! Ah! Do you have it? Some screws. <laughs> I have no idea why it looks like that though. Like what? <laughs> Crooked? are basically like uber capable forerunners um, and we put snow tires on it a few weeks ago and this thing is amazing anyways I am headed up our road for the first time by myself because I dropped Riley off at a friend's house um, and I need to go back to the property so I'm headed up the hill in my car and I thought it would be a good time to touch you know I think that little car confessional I did in our last video I was kind of surprised by how much negativity it got. And I think it's like, we live in this world where we're so afraid to be vulnerable. And like, the snowy road makes me nervous. Like, I don't know, that's okay. And so I figured it'd be fun. You know, I told you about my fear and now I'm gonna show you guys, oh car. <laughs> Now I'm gonna show you guys conquering my fear. Cause I think that's the whole point of our channel. It's like, we wanna show you guys that it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to be scared. It's okay to be uncomfortable. And there's only one way to learn and there's only a way to become comfortable and you have to do it. And hiding it and pretending that we're not scared or frustrated or whatever, I think just makes false expectations that then make it harder for you to do everything. So I'm driving our road right now and I'm gonna bring you guys along for it. We are headed, we, I said we, it's just me. I'm headed to the first steep switchback. We are gonna give it a little momentum and hopefully not get stuck. It's like an S turn so you can't get too much momentum because then you start sliding sideways and that's also not good. Okay, here's the S turn right here. And give it some gas. Go a little sideways. <laughs> you guys. All right, I did it. First one done. The steep hill, I'm gonna hit it with my purse! I almost made it, but I also broke the camera. Okay. We're gonna try going back a little bit because I didn't make the turn. We're gonna try to make the turn now. Guys, I made it. I think I might have used too much, too many ponies. Or it's just really slippery right now, I don't know. Well, there you go. I drove our road for the first time in the snow by myself. It was fine. It was fun. It was actually really fun. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think I'm probably still gonna tell you guys when I'm scared to do something and hopefully you have nicer comments next time. But if not, I'm still gonna do it. I hear Riley, but it kind of sounds like he's stuck down there. This would be the perfect time to debut our latest endeavor to you guys. We bought a snow plow. 
We didn't have anything to put the snow plow on, but someone is very, very generous. Okay, let's find out if he thinks that was slippery. I got, I got fully stuck. That makes <laughs> me feel so much better about myself because I was sideways in it and I it, broke the camera. <laughs> what? How? It fell while I was sideways. Oh, you were filming? Yes. <laughs> yes, I was fully sideways and then I got very stuck and had to back down and try again. Yeah, I think we're gonna need a better solution because the road is gonna get torn up doing that. Why is this so slippery right now? I don't know. So Not just you. Feel I didn't no, get actually, I was I was gonna come up and laugh because I was I was like, man, I know Courtney's right in front of me, but I, the road doesn't even look torn up. She must have made it easy, and then I got stuck. Should we introduce? Without further ado, our latest. This is not our truck. <laughs> a very generous friend has lent us this truck for the winter. Uh, I found a great deal on a plow for it on Craigslist. And now we're gonna have a plow truck this winter to help keep our road cleared so we can hopefully keep getting in and out because there's only like six inches of snow on the ground right now and it's it's pretty Slick. rough. <laughs> and the the plow store in town happened to have the correct mount and wiring harness for this truck. And so we're only a few days away from, from having, a having a plow on this truck. Which is good, given that. I'm gonna lift from down here, ready? Oh, gosh, I can't. Let it fall. Ow! Why would I do that? You, like a you guys say that we work well together, and sometimes we do, but sometimes <laughs> it's just stressful. <laughs> 